Hello and welcome to our Voices series, where we talk with business and technology leaders about what they are seeing in the world today. My name is Rich Holzman. I'm one of Accenture's business leaders. And today I'm joined by a good friend of mine and Accenture's Global Technology Innovation Officer, Mark Carell Billiard. Mark, welcome to the show. Thanks, Rich. Hello, everyone. Thanks for inviting me. And the topic for today's conversation is Accenture Technology Vision 2021. And just to set the context a little bit, and then I'll pass to you, Mark. So every year over the past more than 20 years, Accenture has developed the technology vision which identifies the emerging technology trends that have the greatest impact on our companies and governments and the different organizations that we work with. And every year it's quite insightful and it gives us a little preview of the future. So the headline uh, for this year is, uh, what is it? Leaders wanted masters of change at this moment of truth. So can you tell us a little more about what, what, the, what the point is? So the tech vision this year is all about the fact that clearly the world is hungry for a new kind of leadership, as you said. And we believe that the, the digital acceleration combined with the need to move from reaction to reinvention, I think, uh, this creates new opportunity that we may you know, never see again in this generation. So I think it's, it's a great um, opportunity for all of us uh, to rebound from it and then to reinvent our, our future in terms of product, in terms of services. So as you said, the headline speaks uh, to the new truth that now every leader must be a technology leader. Uh, Julie Sweet says like every CEO is a technology CEO. I like that. And every company must be a technology company. So, um, so I kind of went through, you know, the trends. So, so maybe we'll start, you know, what's your, can you, can you start with one of your favorites and tell us a little bit about it and then we'll go down the list. So I'd say probably one of my favorites and, and I'm sure that you would have guessed already is the mirror world, uh, because I'm always excited about digital twins. I've, um, I remember a long, long time ago when I was living in San Jose, Pierre Nantem visited our lab in San Jose and he says like, I hate traveling. Is there a way that I could be teleported at one point of time? And I said like, eventually we'll be able to create a teleportation platform. So we're, we would digitalize all our environment, our spaces and demos, and then you don't have to travel anymore. We ship you basically those VR glasses and then boom, you'll be immersed into this world. So digital twin is all about this. I mean, it's all creating basically a digital environment of a real space the most product and services and provide you with an immersive experience where you're going to fit well into this, you know, and, and this is something that we're going to see. We see that in two ways. First of all, because people want to learn about this. So if you want to go to the labs and you can't go to the lab, but you still want to be trained, then you can use this kind of technology to be trained. So we use like immersive training to this. We can also look at these digital twin that are can connect it together and starting to be very intelligent a digital world, a digital ecosystem. And on this, you can do simulation. So scenario planning and all these things. And many companies are doing that. Unilever, for example, the port of Rotterdam, for example, is no all managed by digital twins. And so that's that's amazing because I mean you cut cost, you reduce your carbon footprint, you can do again simulation and scenario planning planning, you uh, um, improve your maintenance and operations. All these things. Great. So, you know, on the topic of, of uh, mirrored world and digital and digital twins, you know, in my part of the business, which works with Microsoft, yeah. the example, and you know the example as well, but for, for our audience, you know, the Mars. So for those that don't know, Mars is a multinational candy and food products company, and they make one of my favorite candies, uh, the <laughs> Skittles. So, uh, so if you haven't had Skittles, go try them. They're fantastic. Um, but the work that we do uh, with Microsoft at Mars is uh, is pretty impressive. It's 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 as you described. It's creating a digital twin of manufacturing to increase their efficiency and flexibility and agility, and and you can see the whole virtual world next to the real world, and they're using that to model, to optimize, to make sure that they can uh, manage drift problems. And it's really just a fantastic kind of real world example of taking the mirrored world, the digital twin into the manufacturing environment. Um, so that's a really, really exciting space that we're, uh, that we're seeing together with Microsoft. And maybe we'll go back up to the first trend. So um, the first one was stack strategically. Can you tell us a little bit about that? If you look at, you were talking about this fast uh, forward button, you know, like pushing the fast forward button where people need to 
company had to reinvent their business, their product, their services, and everything. They had to serve clients in a different way. You know, think about that. In the United States, before pandemic, 40% of transaction was online shopping. It went up 80% during pandemic. That means that you need like to have a machine that can collect basically more requests, online requests, in a matter of weeks. How do you do that? So you need to be ready and you need to have the technology stack to be ready. So we're talking about cloud, we're talking about microservices, we're talking about all these things. Even like before the pandemic, when I was meeting with C-Level, I really saw in the last three years a big shift in the discussion. CEOs, CFOs want to understand exactly what quantum computing can do for their company, how they can leverage artificial intelligence much more and everything. So it's all about tech here. And then you need to think about stacking strategically so that which type of stack, technology stack you're going to use so that you're going to be more nimble, more flexible at speed, basically, to recreate your product and your services. That's what it is. So again, in my line of, of, of our business, yeah, I work closely with Microsoft. And I think what they're doing in the space um, around the stack strategically is uh, is pretty exciting because, you know, as as you as you said, every business leader is now a technology leader. And what Microsoft has done is they've seen that and they've pivoted to build their entire stack around what they're now calling the digital transformation platform, which starts at the top you know, with um, with the teams in that environment, but then it moves into the dynamics and power platform, the low code, no code, and then the full stack of Azure Analytics, uh, AI, IoT, supported by the, the bed of security. And what we're seeing is that clients are using that to build their new platforms, um, and they're using that to, to reinvent themselves. And, and in particular, there's part of that, that stack um, that they're using to do another one of our trends, but they're using it for the low code, no code, and to empower everybody in the enterprise um, to kind of to build technology. So another one of your your trends is I technologist, and, uh, and, and can you talk a little bit about that? Because in the in my world, that's power platform that's sitting on top of the Azure stack using Azure DevOps. But can you describe that one a little bit for? Sure. I mean, I think this is a great one, uh, and this is something that we've been always. Um, advocating for our people is that it's, it's more like a mindset really than anything else. And what we say here is that uh, when people talk about technology, they always believe in their organization that, oh, technology sits into within our IT organization. Well, I think that's completely wrong because as I said, uh, your, your organization, your CEO is a technology CEO. So technology needs to be pervasive in the mindset of the people. People need to be engaged with technology. And doesn't mean that they need basically to get a computer installed Visual Studio and start programming in C++ or Python. No, 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 no. Today, there's platforms like low code, no code and everything that can help you basically to do visual programming. So if you've never programmed before, you can use kind of these tools to be able to do a program very quickly. And when people see that, they get excited about it. And that's why it's starting to drive innovation and rethinking about product and services, how they can improve things. So maybe an example on that. So uh, recently talked to one of our clients, Shell, and they have um, what they call the DIY software development factory. Neil Capagna uh, runs it. And it's a, exactly as you said. I mean, their their vision was to use the Microsoft stack with Power Platform sitting on top of Azure, connected with the rest of the open source uh, ecosystem, to enable the, um, the 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 field to to build applications. And what they talk about is going after the long tail of value, and they let you know people who are actually in the problem solve the problems using it. And uh, and if you hear them talk, it's just a great example because. Yes, some problems require pro developers, but many problems can can be solved with these low code, no code citizen developers, and that's kind of kind of what he talks about. Sure. Um, so maybe to jump to another trend, uh, anywhere, everywhere. Tell us about uh, that. If you want to give a good example of what it means, it means that now we're interacting through Teams, or we've been Zoom, or we've been WebEx, so and stuff like that, and we need to get used to it. I don't want to say that everything will be digital forever. Now we'll be back to the office and everything, but probably less. And then we'll need to understand exactly how we're going to work in this kind of new mode, like physical and digital all together with all through these connections. Yeah, I know. I absolutely agree. And on one of the previous conversations we had, we had with uh, with a couple of folks from financial services and 
And uh, and what they're seeing with Teams is it's not only, of course, the enterprise tool of collaboration, but it's becoming the new face uh, to the customer. It's yeah. becoming the new portal to everything, partners, employees, customers. And what we're seeing is that, you know, Microsoft is trying to build in native into Teams, all the, the other functionality, so that that becomes your new portal to the world. Um, so I think we covered most of the trends. I think we still have one last one. We've got uh, we've got the last one, which is from uh, me to we. And I think I think for me to we is a very important one. I mean, it's like master of truth and stuff like that. And I think we're moving into a world where we need to be a master of truth as well, and truth and trust. You know, like trust is the I would say like the the digital oil of the of the future business of every client, like product and services. People need trust. And they need even more trust now that we've been having this pandemic where people realize exactly, I mean, how uh, fragile is our world. And so for many years, our lab's been working on technology to help you trust, basically, supply chain, to help you trace transaction, to help you all those things. These technologies, like there's a big name for this called multi-party systems, okay, MPS. In a very simple terms, it means that I can take data I can encrypt this data and I can run it through an algorithm that themselves encrypted to get an outcome of encrypted data that only you are aware of it because that's your own data. And that's extremely powerful because today it's all about sharing data, you know, to make a better world. But people don't want to share data because there's IP related to this data. Now, if I can tell them that, trust me, your data will be encrypted, nobody will be able to read it. And then we'll be able to progress together with this. That's going to be a fantastic world. Fantastic. Well, a very exciting conversation. So I think we're we're out of time. So Mark, thank you for joining. As always, it's uh, it's a delight to talk to you. I love the excitement, the energy. I'm excited for our future. You know the challenges, but also the opportunities. And for those watching, if you want to learn more, please check out the Accenture Tech Vision 2021. You can visit the link and the information, uh, and stay tuned for for more videos. And uh, and thanks for joining. Thanks, Mark. See ya. Thanks, Rich. Cheers.